Hello and welcome to a London visited with a difference with my good friend taking it all. It's Dougal who's sitting on my lap here and he's not on the seat and this is his first ever underground journey. Yes, this is the first time Dougal has been to London and I hope you appreciate the scarf that he's got around there. There you go. We've got everything London visited ready and this is a dog's eye view or sniff of London. Now, one of the questions I get asked quite a few times in different comments and direct emails, etc., is can you take dogs here, there and everywhere? So what we thought today with Dougal's help is let's go into London and let's go and find out where you can take him. So first of all, yes, you can travel on the underground and buses with dogs and they're completely free. And then we thought, let's start off by going to Mayfair. So we're here at Grosvenor Square to start off with. And we thought we'd go for a quick run around the square before heading off to Hyde Park, but we thought we'd do Mayfair first. But of course, the good thing about going up to London is you never know when you're gonna meet some other doggy friends. Now, Dougal had to watch his P's and Q's because don't forget we're in Mayfair. So these are probably quite posh dogs. So you have to be really, really careful. There you go. And that one looks like, uh, yeah, it's been well puffed up. And as you can see, he's trying to make a break for it, but um, his two new buddies want to carry on playing. Right, okay, so fast, last sniff, goodbye. And then we're going to head off and we're going to walk down the streets of Mayfair. We're going to go to Hyde Park and we've got some other great things to show you. And also do make sure you stick around because we've got Dougal's Snapshot photo album right at the end of the various places that he's been across London. Hope you enjoy this video. Now, when I was actually putting this video together and doing research in the background, it was quite confusing when you can take dogs and can't take dogs. So we just thought we're gonna give it a go. And we were quite surprised with some of the places, which you'll see. Now, also, don't forget we're in Mayfair. So this has got a different class of sniffs. There you go. They got a tree there and that was very, very nice. But as you can tell, the way that Dugan is, the head is down and there's plenty of lovely smells on the streets here at Mayfair. So being quite a white little fluffy dog, Dougal is a Pouchan, which is a mix between a toy poodle and a Bichon Frise. There you go, that uh, saves people dropping in the comments, what kind of dog is he? Uh, and it's his first time, as I say, up in London. And you know what? It's well and truly long overdue. Now the reason for this video is not only is it a fun video where actually we don't just tell you where you can take your dogs, we're actually gonna show you by taking Dougal there, but also a lot of people take day trips to London, but then you're thinking, what do I do with my dog? Well, if we can show you these places, it may well hope. And of course we have to go to one of the major parks and we came here to Hyde Park. Now what's beautiful about Hyde Park is we came here recently and it was all closed up. They had all the grass being protected because they'd put new turf down. The good news is they've just taken the barriers away. So now the park is a free for all. You can get all over the place. And guess what, Dougal does. Now, the reason we brought Dougal to Hyde Park to start with, and also Grosvenor Square as well, is so he can have a good run round, release a whole load of energy. So when he does go into the other places that we're gonna show you in this video, he's much more relaxed, much more calm, and also doesn't need to go to the toilet facilities as well. Now, judging by it, there's something good in that grass. So we'll go Dougal cam mode. No, I don't think I've got the dog's trained nose for this one. So obviously there must be something else in there. And as you can see, more doggy friends around. Yeah, you can tell by that dog's face. I was quite surprised to see another dog in what he thought it was his own park. Can you imagine having the whole of Hyde Park to yourself? If you live around here and live around Mayfair, I suppose that's what you're paying for. With the vast amount of space that you've got here, it was brilliant to be able to let him off the lead and have a really good run round. And actually, as far as the rules are concerned, you can let your dog off the lead as long as they're well controlled and come back to you. Every so often I put him back on the lead if there are lots and lots of birds around or lots of other people, because you've got to be more respectful for other people that are around just in case they go running off, because you never know if people do like dogs or not. But it's a really good place because there is so much grass here to be able to let them just off the lead and have a good run round. 
And I thought when we're in the middle of the park here, I wonder what view a dog would get of the London skyline. So there you can see the Hilton on Park Lane and we're looking up Park Lane there so you can just about make out some buses. But of course, everything is very, very low to the ground and hidden by the trees and also by the blades of grass as well. And here we're looking over towards Knightsbridge or Dougal's running over towards Knightsbridge and you can just see behind the Serpentine Lake, which we'll head to very, very shortly. Once he's had a bit more frisk, If you're loving this video as much as Dougal's loving having a run around Hyde Park for the first time ever, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button. Let's get this video spread to more people so that they can love London as well. And if you haven't subscribed already, what are you doing? Go on, hit that button. We've got so many videos to come between now and the end of the year. From a good run round on the beautiful grass of Hyde Park to the Serpentine Lake, which is just a bit further down the hill. And as you can see here, an absolute necessity for a lead, especially with the swans around and also other birds as well. With many of the swans making a beeline into the people because lots of people got bread and other bits of food. It was interesting that Dougal just sort of looked and went, oh yeah, it looks bigger than me and just sort of left them alone. <laughs> Didn't take any interest which is the sensible move to make. So taking his wildlife in his stride, we leave Hyde Park and we go to Hyde Park Corner. Yes, the big roundabout between Green Park and Hyde Park itself. And we're gonna use this to get to Green Park and then down Piccadilly. And here you've got the memorial in the center. Now, if you want to know more about Hyde Park, I'll put a link to our video that we've done in Hyde Park Corner up in the top right hand corner for you. Another great thing about bringing a dog to London is you've got so many parks, but you've also got so many squares and sort of garden areas. So if you're getting from one place to another, there's never that far away from a sort of a park or an open area where you can walk them and exercise them so they can get a bit of fresh air and get their sniffs as well. It wasn't until about this point that I realized why Dougal was always going for the benches. Of course, people sit there and have their lunch and leave bits on the floor. So basically he was scrounging for food. Yeah, that didn't happen for much longer. One thing's for certain, dogs aren't daft. The great thing about having a little white fluffy dog and coming up to London is the fact that people stop and want to give him a fuss. And he is more than delighted to reciprocate with lots and lots of licks back, yeah, as you can see here. And here we're on Piccadilly. And the reason we're on Piccadilly is we got into Fortnum and Mason. You're allowed dogs in Fortnum and Mason, but they've got to be carried. So as you can see here, Dougal is eyeing up all of the food in the food hall at Fortnum and Mason. We can't show you too much because do you know how difficult it is carrying a dog and filming at the same time? So if anyone says, you didn't film much, uh, we've got previous videos and I'll put links there. But as you can see, here's having a good look at the biscuits. <laughs> and there you go, just as proof, you've got the chandelier and you've got the tea area behind as well. There you go, Fortnum and Mason, as you know it, with Dougal in there. So the good news is if you wanna do some shopping, there you go, that's one place you can go, but you've got to carry your dog. Now we haven't tried Harrods, but who knows, if we get the demand, that could be for a future video, if they allow you to take dogs in there. But don't worry, we have found a place where you can even walk your dog, and we're gonna show you that a little bit later in this video. So here, we're over at Piccadilly Circus. Yes, I decided to take him to all of the tourist hotspots. And as I said, stay tuned, because at the end, we've got the Dougal snapshot album of his trip up to London. Now, if you're Coming up to London, you're gonna to wanna to stop at some point to go to a cafe or have something to eat. And here's a really dog-friendly restaurant. Now, interestingly enough, when we got here, it was full inside. So we had to sit out in this sort of marqueed area on the street right by Covent Garden. But this place is dog-friendly, so you can take your dogs in there. And also, there you go, you can just see there, they've got a dog bowl as well. So very, very dog-friendly. 
So this is Southampton Street, which leads from Covent Garden down to the Strand. And this is the shop, uh, this is the uh, cafe that's here at the site. By the way, the food is lovely and the coffee is even better. And there you go, there is Covent Garden. Shall we do it? Come on, if we're gonna bring a dog and we're gonna bring Dougal up to London, we've gotta go and show him Covent Garden. So let's go for a walk around the piazza. Now you'll notice Dougal getting very excited here is because the man that's opposite him, one of the cleaners here at Covent Garden is having a lovely talk to Dougal, which he's taking in and getting very, very excited by it. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've now become a bit of an expert at looking at the different type of paving stones in London, just watching and filming Dougal. Right, you can see here, Covent Garden is getting ready for the coronation. We're only a couple of weeks away and they've covered Covent Garden in the flags, which reminds me of the Platinum Jubilee. That's how they had it set up for that as well. So we may well have to come down here and do some more filming pre-coronation. As we go across to the North Hall, they've also got that decorated as well, uh, but Dougal is extremely delighted because of course people are dropping bits of food and the amount of food that Dougal found during the course of our day trip to London was absolutely incredible, it kept him very, very happy. Having a dog in central London is a fantastic conversation starter. The amount of people that come up to you and want to chat about your dog and give them a fuss is absolutely incredible. But then you also notice you don't see that other many dog owners in central London as well. Actually, there maybe will be a reason for it. But when you do see another dog owner walking their dog, all of a sudden you stop and sort of enter into conversation about where you've been and some dog friendly places. Okay, so this is us heading out of Covent Garden. The next place we went to, and I can't actually show you inside because they get a bit sniffy about your filming in there, is you can take your dog into the Apple shop. So we did. I went and had a look at a few iPads, played with a bit of technology, whilst Dougal had a sniff round on the floor. So we went into the big Apple shop here at Covent Garden. So Apple are really open about you taking your pets in. Right, then we decided to walk down the road. Just down from Covent Garden is this place, which is absolutely beautiful. Love this. This is Floral Street. So we thought we'd take Dougal on the cobbles down here. And the reason for heading down here is because there's a beautiful alleyway which we'll take Dougal through in just a couple of seconds. Approximately halfway down Floral Street, you have this, which is Conduit Court. If you've not been there, it's a treat. But also to take your dog, you can actually see them in all the mirrored sides. Yes, it's the Tunnel of Lights over near Covent Garden Conduit Court, which is well worth a visit anytime. In central London, we know there's at least two very dog-friendly stores. One's John Lewis on Oxford Street, and this is the other over at Liberty. So we thought, let's go to Liberty because it's one of those beautiful places which we must come down and cover. We've covered it at Christmas, but come on, we can go in. Now, the great thing about coming into both Liberty and also John Lewis is you don't need to pick up your dog. You can just walk in and walk your dog as if it's, well, anywhere really even Dougal's confused it's like aren't you gonna pick me up uh no we're gonna carry on walking so these are the beautiful wooden floors of liberty and we're gonna go up in the lift another first experience for Dougal never been in a lift before now I'm guessing from the attraction that we had as we walked through, the shop assistants don't see that many dogs when you walk in because everyone wanted to make a fuss of him again. Ah, see, the attention you get just by taking a dog around. And here we go, Dougal's first ever go in a lift. <laughs> it's like, oh, doors are opening. Do I go out? Uh, no, you're waiting behind. Also, to prove no, it just walked into some place with a wooden floor. Here is this, one of the centers of liberties, which is just absolutely fantastic. So we've come to the third floor and there's a reason for that, it's the fabric department. And we wanna get some London fabric for Dougal for another neck scarf. And we're really in luck today because we found that. And not only that, the shop assistants were more than helpful because she took some pictures as well, which you'll see later in Dougal's snapshots. Right, time to go down to the lift and we've got the whole lift to ourselves. I think the door's closing, slightly surprised him there.
Now the fantastic thing about coming to Liberty is not only are they really, really dog friendly around the store, but you're also encouraged if you want to, to take your dog into the cafe, or into the restaurant area, because they're more than able to look after them there as well, which is fantastic. Of course, you want a really well behaved dog to do that, which is unlike Fortnum and Mason, where you're gonna take your dog, but you can only walk around with a dog under your arm. Can you imagine walking in with a Labrador in Fortnum and Mason? Oh, wow. Now it may be the train journey back home, but don't go anywhere. We've got the snapshot coming up in just a second, some photo shots, but you can see here Dougal's much more relaxed on his second ever train journey. This may be Dougal's journey home on the Elizabeth line, but you don't want to go anywhere because you don't want to miss the photo snapshot album of Dougal's day in London. So I really hope that you've enjoyed our look at what you can do with dogs up in London as modeled by our dog Dougal. And as you can tell, he had a fantastic day. What was your favorite bit? What was your biggest surprise about our journey up to London with dogs? And have you got a dog and would you bring a dog up to London? And if so, where would you take him? Let us know in the comments.